Thank you for joining the February 2023 Healthcare Academy webinar. Our topic today is recent interest in hydrogen peroxide sterilization in healthcare settings, presented by Dr. Attila Nozari. I am Fernando Malgueiro, Medical Education Manager for 3M Medical Solutions Division, and I will be hosting this webinar. Before we get started with this presentation, let's go to the following disclaimer. The content of this webinar is based on current United States information, including regulations, standards, guidelines, and practice as of February 16th, 2023. Requirements in other countries may be different and US guidance may change in the future. Always consult product instructions for use and follow local laws and regulation. This presentation contains an overview of general information and should not be relied upon in isolation to make specific decisions. Our webinar will be presented by Dr. Attila Nozari. Dr. Nozari is a senior medical science liaison at 3M USAC, US and Canada, medical, medical solutions division. He has bachelor, master and PhD in chemistry and has worked in various roles over his career, including quality control, quality assurance, lecturing and R&D. Attila has published several articles on polymers DSSs, data analytics, and sterilization in scientific journals. He is a technical expert for the Canadian Standards Association, Standards Council of Canada, and International Organization for Standardization, ISO Technical Committee 198 Sterilization of Healthcare Products, and ISO Technical Committee 304 Healthcare Organization Management, and the Association for the Advancement of Medical Instrumentation, EMI. At the end of this presentation, I will host a Q&A session with our presenter. Feel free to drop your question in the question tab. Now, I would like to welcome our presenter, Dr. Nozari. Please take it away. Hello everyone, uh, thank you for the introduction and thank you all of you for joining us today. So um, I have a disclosure, I am an employee of 3M. Today uh, we will be uh, <clears throat> talking about uh, some of the uh, important points that are in our this, uh, presentation today are these topics. We want to review hydrogen peroxide sterilization works as a first section, then we'll continue with describing the capabilities and limitations that this uh, modality has, and uh, we'll discuss about the required sterility assurance. So hydrogen peroxide, it's a chemical compound. The formula is H2O2, and hydrogen peroxide is the simplest peroxide. Peroxide is a compound that has a single oxygen-oxygen bound. As it can be seen in the picture, there are two red uh, molecules that are connected with one line, which, which represents a single uh, bound. In its pure form, it's almost colorless or uh, slightly more viscous than water. And uh, water solution, its uh, viscosity is about 1.1. Uh, 1.11 and uh, in uh, pure solution it's 1.45 gram over cubic centimeter. It is used as an, an oxidizer. Uh, it's a bleaching, bleaching agent and antiseptic. It's usually used as a dilute solution in water for consumer use and household and in higher concentrations for industrial use. It is effective against wide spectrum of microbial contamination, such as bacteria, uh, viruses, fungi. Hydrogen peroxide uh, has a finite shelf life because over time it naturally decomposes 
to it's to into water and oxygen uh, although it will take some time but uv radiation uv rays from sunlight and also warm conditions temperature can actually catalyze this com this decomposition reaction so sometime you see them they are stored in dark containers uh, make sure that you follow instruction for use for storage conditions uh, a fun fact it can be found in hair as well in fact it accumulates in the white and gray hair and inhibits synthesis of the mel uh, melanin pigment while hydrogen peroxide is new to terminal sterilization it has a long history in healthcare industry hydrogen peroxide was discovered in 1818 by Louis Thannert with the reaction of the barium peroxide with nitric acid since then hydrogen peroxide has been used an oxidizing agent it was used in medicine in 1891 uh, the initial use of hydrogen peroxide industrial sterilization may be traced back to 1977 when a U.S. patent was granted to Francis Moore and Leon Perkinson for their hydrogen peroxide vapor sterilization method, which describes it as a cold sterilization process. ASP's first uh, vaporized hydrogen peroxide gas plasma sterili sterilizer, the Sterad 100 system, received FDA clearance in 1993 and since then it has been used in hospitals mostly for sterilization of reusable, reusable devices such as polyethylene and polytetrafluoroethylene flexible endoscopes. Uh, so vaporized hydrogen peroxide has been around for some time however in the last couple of years there has been more interest in this system and the question is why? With technological advancement, what do you think? Do you think we'll get more simple devices or more complex devices? Uh, the answer can seem obvious. Uh, it's obvious that the advances in technology has transformed many aspects of modern medicine, such as robotic assisted procedures, improving the quality of patient care, but in turn led to more complex surgical instruments. Surgical instruments uh, used in conventional surgical techniques are less complex for reprocessing. The complexity of the surgical instrument, such as narrow and long lumens, make cleaning difficult and increase the risk of retention of organic residues and microorganisms, and consequently, they increase the risk for uh, infection. In general, minimally invasive surgery is associated with less pain or a shorter hospital stay and fewer complications. This is great. Everyone likes this part, this aspect of it. On the other hand, it also means using medical devices with more electronic uh, components in them. That they can be, these electronic components can be moisture sensitive and heat sensitive, heat sensitive which means they, these devices can no longer tolerate uh, elevated steam sterilization temperature. It's 250 to 175 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, 121 to 134 degrees centigrade. Uh, different types of polymers are being used and they require low temperature sterilization systems. Therefore, another technology other than steam is required, uh, such as ethylene oxide or EO, and uh, hydrogen peroxide system. Another factor is the application, is the critical application of these devices, such as endoscope, and outbreaks of the multi-drug resistant microorganisms, MDROs, that all have kind of contributed to increase of the usage of hydrogen peroxide systems. And I will discuss further about this endoscopes in future slides. In 2015, FDA sent out a communication, and this was regarding a specific type of flexible endoscope, duodenoscopes. It was highlighted that the complex design of these devices may impede in, uh, proper reprocessing. 
meticulous manual cleaning should reduce the risk of transmission of infection and implementing a comprehensive quality control program was on that communication. Later in 2015, in May, the gastroenterology and urology devices panel meeting, they highlighted that majority of the panel believes it's necessary to reclassify duodenoscopes from a semi-critical uh, device to a critical device and support to move from high-level disinfection to a sterilization. Outbreaks of antibiotic resistant strain such as CRE has shown that the high level disinfection of some semi-critical and critical devices is not enough. Although some of the outbreaks are related only to damaged scopes, but the fact that these scopes are not being sterilized actually increases the risk of transmission and infection. And these studies and research have been going on since then in this slide, you can see some of the references that they mentioned that these outbreaks and the issues that we have are not limited to duodenoscopes. And uh, some of the references are mentioned here as well. In April uh, 2022, last year actually, so Carl Swords was the first electable uh, endoscope company to have a voluntary recall on its flexible and uh, flexible endoscopes. The risk is the potential to transmit a patient infection and remove the and they remove the high level disinfection method, also liquid chemical sterilization method from their instruction for use. And they mentioned that the effective endoscopes should be sterilized after each use by an appropriate sterilization method recommended in the instruction for use specific for that sc scope. So I want to highlight again, follow the instruction uh, for use and manufacturing instruction for use. Let's have a look at design component. Design of new devices sometimes may not allow, li uh, may not allow liquid cleaning agents and disinfecting agents to reach all areas within medical devices. As I mentioned, we are having uh, new devices being made uh, for, uh, for making minimally invasive surgeries and for other applications, and the complex of devices increase daily, actually. Uh, so in some of this design, air may be trapped in corners, micro wells, and contact regions between two components. And if it happens, it can prevent contact with liquid disinfectants and not allowing a proper disinfection. So some parts of the problems might be related to design. To summarize, these are some of the challenges uh, that mainly flexible endoscopes uh, have uh, had. And it, they show the need uh, and interest for technologies such as ethylene oxide and hydrogen peroxide that are considered low temperature sterilization modality enabled to uh, sterilize these endoscopes safely. So now we want to go to the second part of the presentation and talk about hydrogen peroxide sterilization work. So there were some of the reasons to lead us toward using other technologies like EO and hydrogen peroxide and today's focus is only hydrogen peroxide. So now we want to talk about how the system works. What do you call your uh, vaporized hydrogen peroxide sterilizer in your facility? Do you call it a Sterad, a VPRO, a gas sterilizer, a VHP, a vaporized hydrogen peroxide system? A VP4. So, based on different uh, manufacturers and the uh, models that you have in your facility, or you maybe some other names, general names use. I will talk about uh, this generally, uh, the base of the hydrogen peroxide processes, because as I mentioned, as the names uh, I mentioned, there are differences among uh, different manufacturers, but the general concept is the same. The sterilant is in form of liquid hydrogen peroxide. Liquid hydrogen peroxide get vaporized and then vaporized hydrogen peroxide is injected into the sterilizer chamber to sterilize the devices in the chamber. 
the sterilant is decomposing as it kills and uh, it contacts the items and uh, in the, inside the load inside the sterilizer chamber. The concentration is diminishing during exposure. So the, the time passes, the concentration of hydrogen peroxide decreases as well. After the process, the remaining hydrogen peroxide pass through catalytic converter or a plasma to convert hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen molecules in order to not have toxic waste at the end. Some of the general features of uh, vaporized hydrogen peroxide systems are as follows. They operate at low temperature. Uh, by low temperature, we mean they typically do not uh, exceed 135 degrees Fahrenheit or 55 uh, degrees centigrade. They typically they do not go over that. Uh, they operate at low moisture environment. If you want to compare with the steam, that's saturated steam. Uh, good material compatibility. Uh, it means they're compatible with most plastics, materials, with glass, and metals. Uh, it is effective against a wide spectrum of microbial contamination. It can be used for sterilization of implants with electronic components uh, uh, that they are uh, heat and moisture sensitive that they cannot tolerate uh, steam. It is a surface sterilant and does not penetrate through materials. So this can be useful. Let's have an example here. If there's a syringe filled with a sensitive medication that if you don't want a sterilizing agent reaches that, this uh, uh, sterilant only sterilizes the outside surface of that syringe and does not penetrate inside. All cycle uh, phases take place in a single chamber. You don't need to aerate uh, for aeration in another chamber. Another point also I want to highlight is uh, the compatibility with materials. It has good compatibility, but regarding medical devices to be used for each sterilizer, also you need to uh, uh, consult with the instruction for use of the medical device to see which methods of the sterilization modality they have been validated to be used for. Um, we talked about the features, but now this is some of the limiting features. But when I say limiting, it's in comparison. So, uh, such as smaller chamber volume in comparison to steam. In the same sterilization, we have larger sterilizer with larger chambers, but we have a smaller chamber in the vaporized hydrogen peroxide system. Limited penetration down the long narrow lumens. Again, when we say limited, it means on the in comparison. So uh, lumen lengths and inner diameters that are FDA cleared and are written in manufacturing instruction for use for that sterilizer should be used. Number of lumens is just more than working channels. So uh, air water, air channel, water jet channel, they're also channels. For example, if instruction for use, you may read, this cycle is to be selected for a single flexible endoscope channels with an internal lumen diameter of one millimeter or longer a uh, larger or a length of let's say 900 millimeter or shorter so you will see statements like this that they uh, clearly mentioned what type of instrument with how many channels then can be used for that specific cycle within that specific sterilizer model so definitely follow them uh, the instruction for use cellulose uh, and its uh, derivatives can absorb hydrogen peroxide therefore enough dose may not be left and this can affect the efficacy of the process. When the products get FDA clearance and it would get validated to be used in a specific sterilizer, these conditions are all considered. Uh, also, we mentioned that in the previous slide that the surface sterilant, so it means that the packaging needs to be brisable. So it needs to have a brisable layer such as Tyvek. Only rigid sterilization containers that are validated and are FDA cleared for hydrogen peroxide processes should be utilized. Maximum load limit is also very important. Depending on the manufacturer, you choose the cycle and then it has weight limits. And even uh, the shelf, which shelf to use, upper shelf or bottom shelf or both of them, it varies based on the which cycle type you use. So 
it is very important to follow manufacturer instruction for use for uh, the instruction and the limitations. Regardless of a sterilization modality and a sterilant penetration ability, proper cleaning is essential. We cannot forget that. Devices, if they are not thoroughly cleaned and dried, then they cannot be sterilized. That's a uh, baseline. Also, moisture can uh, cause cycle cancellation. So it's important that to get the devices get dried and cleaned properly. Let's have a brief look at uh, hydrogen peroxide sterilization process cycle phases. These are the general phases that uh, that's typically applies. As, as I mentioned earlier, different manufacturers with different sterilizers, they have different components that might vary a bit. So there are typically three cycle phases. The first phase is the conditioning phase. All medical devices are placed into the chamber and the process starts with a deep vacuum to remove the air from the chamber. In this phase, the sterilizer reaches the set cycle uh, temperature. Please note that if there is a residual water on the devices, it can evaporate and it, can, it will cause longer vacuum time and it may lead to aborted cycle. It depends on how much moisture there. It also can form cold spots on the load. As you know, cold spots are any location where the temperature not achieve the minimum sterilization temperature during the sterilization process. So they can affect the efficacy of the process. In order to avoid cold spots, make sure the medical devices are visibly dry. You may use compressed air for lumen devices or using dry cabinets and you need to follow the guidelines uh, for them. Next phase is the exposure phase. During the exposure phase, liquid hydrogen peroxide is vaporized and injected into the chamber, and at this stage, the pressure rises. Depending on the model and the cycle, hydroperoxide injection will be in one or multiple inject injections. In one specific sterilizer, the amount of hydrogen peroxide introduced into the chamber, and thus duration of the injection varies depending on the load uh, composition, weight and temperature. So the amount of the sterilant varies automatically based on the load. And again, different manufacturers, they have different design. The next phase is the post-conditioning phase. In a plasma system, the cycle will go to plasma phase. If it's not plasma, it will go to aeration state. The plasma will change remaining of hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen molecules. In the system that they used hydrogen peroxide plus ozone, in the exposure phase, after each injection of hydrogen peroxide vapor, ozone is also injected. So I mentioned uh, about gas plasma. How does gas plasma system work? Plasma is the forced state of matter Plasma is gas-like substances, consistence of particles such as positive and negative ions and electrons. Once hydrogen peroxide diffuses through the chamber and surrounds the uh, instrument in the load, the low temperature gas plasma is ignited by applying an electric field and plasma causes the hydrogen peroxide vapor to break into free radicals. When plasma energy is terminated, the free radicals lose their energy state and they can recombine. And when they recombine, oxygen and water vapor uh, is produced. So let's look at some of the global standards that apply to hydrogen peroxide processes. ISO 11140 Part 1, Sterilization of Healthcare Products, Chemical Indicators, uh, mentions the general requirements for the chemical indicator types. ISO 11138 Part 1 mentions the general requirement for biological indicators. ISO 22441, which was published last year, is a new document which discusses the requirements for development, validation, and routine control of a sterilization process for medical devices. AMETIR 17 
uh, uh, compatibility of materials subject to a sterilization has a section on hydrogen peroxide with useful information there. Also, please note that uh, vaporized hydrogen peroxide is part of the FDA established sterilization processes since 2016. So uh, going to the last section of the, our presentation today, which is monitoring piece. For monitoring, I will refer to MEST58 uh, document. MEST58 mentions physical monitors include time, temperature, and pressure records, displays, digital printouts and gauges. The rational statement for this section is uh, physical monitoring provides real-time assessment of the sterilization cycle conditions and provide permanent records by means of chart recording or digital printouts. Physical monitors needed to detect malfunction as soon as possible so that appropriate Take, uh, corrective actions uh, can be taken in the event of, of failures. Based on MEST58, an internal chemical indicator should be used inside each package, each tray, each containment device, rigid sterilization containment systems, instrument case, cassettes, or organizing trays that they are going to be sterilized. The chemical indicator should be placed in the area out of the package tray or contaminating device that create the greatest challenge to sterile and penetration. You may consult with the manufacturer instruction for use for this part. Also, this document uh, continues about biological, uh, regarding biological indicators that biological indicators are a sterilization process monitoring device consisting of a standardized viable population of microorganism. Usually they are bacterial spores because they are known to be the most resistant to the modality of a sterilization that's being uh, monitored. Biological indicators are intended to demonstrate whether the conditions of that sterilization process were adequate to achieve a sterilization. And also this document mentions that uh, a PCD with an appropriate biological indicator should be used at least daily, but preferably in every sterilization uh, cycle. And uh, it mentions that uh, in other section of this document, uh, ST58, Amy ST58, that PCD should be labeled before use and then positioned in the load uh, according to the sterilizer manufacturer return instruction for use. So as you see everywhere, we've highlighted so many times the instruction uh, for use and I will do that. So, uh, chemical indicators. Looking a bit further into the chemical indicators, ISO 11139 definition states that a chemical indicator is a test system that reveals change in one or more pre-specified process variables based on a chemical or physical change resulting from exposure uh, to that process. Chemical indicator types are defined in ISO 11140 part one. Chemical indicators, they do not verify sterility. Process or exposure indicators, they are to differentiate between process items from unprocessed item, and that's what they have been designed for. On the other hand, internal chemical indicators, they provide information on the presence and condition of the sterilizing agent at the indicator's location with an individual uh, package. So, what are different types of chemical indicators? As you are familiar with the classification, there are six chemical indicator types that are defined in ISO, uh, and that's different from FDA, which I'll talk about that um, in future slide. Among these six types, that's uh, type one is exposure or process indicator, type two is a special indicator like Bowie and Dick test, type three is internal indicator, single variable, 
type 4 is internal in the indicator, which is a multiple variable. And uh, type 5 is internal indicator, integrating indicator is called, and type 6 is called as uh, emulating indicator. Among these, type 1 and 4 are available for hydrogen peroxide. So type 1, type 3, and 4 actually are defined in ISO, but what is available outside in the market is only type 1 and 4. So we don't have the variety of the uh, CIs that they are available for steam esterilization out there. We are only have two for hydrogen peroxide processes. As I mentioned in previous slide, the FDA classification is different. FDA has its own separate classification from ISO for chemical indicators. Uh, the chemical indicators were initially divided to process indicators, chemical integrators, which is uh, type 5, similar to type 5 in um, uh, STEAM, and air removal indicators. Uh, that's the uh, test. From March 2020, FDA expanded this category and added another column to this uh, classification. And it expanded this new category is for chemical indicators for chemical sterilization, including vaporized hydrogen peroxide sterilization. And it is, it is, it is called as a multiple variable chemical indicator for uh, chemical vapor sterilization. Again, this is not for steam, and this category is for chemical sterilization because there were new products to be added to this group. That was why this category was created last year. Now, let's have a look at the test conditions for a type 1 in vaporized hydrogen processes. So, um, following the exposure to a specified test condition, the process indicators shall perform as it's shown in this table uh, in order to be designated as a type, y, type 1 uh, indicator for hydrogen peroxide. The absence of hydrogen peroxide is clear. It's carried out when there is no hydrogen peroxide and there should be no change. And then no change is a change that's markedly uh, different from the visible change as specified by manufacturer. So the manufacturer of that uh, chemical indicator defines what is uh, the visible change and what is not a uh, visible change. And so that's the manufacturer based on the methods, the color or color change or moving front or other form. In, um, uh, as you can see in the second row, if there's a se seven seconds of time, there should be no visible change. But in six minutes plus one second at the specific time and temperature, as you can see, with this uh, 50 degrees centigrade and 2.3 milligram uh, per liter of the concentration, so within the little uh, within the range of the variance that they have, they can uh, should have a visible change. So within six minutes, a type one should have a visible change, which is a positive one. So now you can compare it to the you know the cycles that you have and uh, it can give you an idea at, at which portion of the cycle you will get a uh, basically a good response from type 1 indicator because that's how they have been uh, designed uh, to be used for uh, type 3 and type 4 performance uh, as I said based on ISO type 3 and 4 are defined, so it can be, but what is only available in the market is type 4. So only type 1 and type 4 are the one that they are available at the moment in the market. The test point, uh, they, are, they are done in two test points. Test point 1 is indicator that when it's tested as a stated value, uh, values, it shall reach its end point. And test point is when, when it's tested uh, minus the combined tolerances, it shall not reach the end point. Endpoint in this testing are again defined by the manufacturer of that uh, indicator. And what's the stated value that's mentioned here is written here is SV. The stated values are value or values of critical process variable at which the indicator is designed to reach its endpoint defined by the manufacturer. So as you can see uh, in type one, if just six minutes time is enough for a response, for a full response, with uh, considering the temperature and the concentration. But uh, for uh, type three and four, 
it depends on the, how many of the variables are they checking. Uh, it should be if it's minus 25% of the test time or three degrees of the temperature between 20% of the uh, uh, concentration, then it will uh, it will not reach a complete point. It will show a failure based on the design structure. So this gives me an idea of what a type four can tell you about in your system versus a type one. So type one indicator shows the, as I mentioned, shows processed versus unprocessed. They can be in form of tape, label, uh, card. It can be tamper evident devices. It can be internal, external uh, CI. And you can see examples of two type of type one uh, indicators in this slide. Type four indicator that we said they are multivariable process indicators and internal indicators. This is an example of that uh, type four responds to three critical uh, parameters of the exposure time the temperature and concentration of the vaporized hydrogen peroxide. Biological indicators. So we talked about physical uh, monitors, we talked about chemical indicators, and now we are talking about biological indicators. Uh, ISO 11139 definition for biological indicator is, it's a test system containing a viable microorganism providing a specified resistance to a specified sterilization process. As we discussed earlier, the general requirements come from the ISO 11138, uh, part one. Uh, the test organism is Geobacillus thermophilus, and the reason is that there are lots of data in the literature to show that these spores are resistant to this uh, modality. And this is an example of also a biological indicator seen in this picture. Process challenge devices or PCD or test packs that you may hear. Uh, unlike Etlinoxide, EO or STEAM, there is no instruction for a user assembled BI PCD for hydrogen peroxide. For STEAM or EO, you can refer to ME, uh, ST79 and ST41 on instruction how you can make your user assembled PCD, your in-house PCD for monitoring these systems. And unlike uh, STEAM, it is not possible to have a PCD with a CI only because there is no type 5 or type 6 available for hydrogen peroxide yet. For uh, you, um, please follow biological indicator uh, manufacturer instruction for use for use of the placement of biological indicator in the sterilizer. In US, uh, the hospitals and user um, typically place a biological indicator and a chemical indicator in a peel pouch indicated for use for hydrogen peroxide sterilizer and it positions the BI in the sterilizer chamber as recommended by the sterilizer manufacturer for location of the uh, highest uh, challenging spot. This is a summary of monitoring requirement <clears throat> based on the standards. On the table on the left, you see the physical parameters uh, and, uh, the <clears throat> and the documents, uh, the ST58 recommends to have it every cycle. Internal chemical indicators, every cycle, pack, container, or pouch. Internal chemical indicators, again, every cycle, pouch, uh, pack, container, and biological indicator, it's required, it is uh, recommended to use tested daily, preferably for each cycle. On the column on the right side, it's, it shows the uh, frequency and uh, requirement of monitoring for these physical and, and external, internal and biological indicators from CSA document, which is the Canadian Standard Association document, uh, document Z314-23, uh, which is actually a new document published uh, recently. So coming to summary, uh, hydrogen, vaporized hydrogen peroxide processes are very effective. 
However, one needs to be mindful of the process-related limitation. And again, when we are talking about limitations, it's based on the uh, how the system they have been designed and tested for, especially for uh, lengths and the lengths of the lumen, the inner diameters, how many of the channels that they have that they can be used for each uh, cycle type. Uh, also, the weight limitations that they have that, that varies from one manufacturer to other manufacturers. So. Uh, definitely follow manufacturer instruction for use for knowing of these uh, limitations. Um, FDA cleared consumables to be used when um, for hydrogen peroxide systems, when the um, sterilizer, when the consumables, they get FDA clearance, they get cleared for that for each specific cycle. And if it's listed on the uh, FDA clearance list, uh, then they can be safely used in them. If not, they have not been tested or validated. Uh, cleaning and drying is very important. It's regardless of which modality you use, either you're using hydrogen peroxide, you're using ethylene oxide, you're using a steam or other modalities. Cleaning is very important and essential step. If it's not cleaned, it cannot be sterilized. So do not forget this baseline. And monitoring is essential for quality control and we talked about that we have uh, physical monitors that the printouts either copy printout or digital copy of your sterilizer that which mentions if they have met the cycle parameters that they have been designed it's very important chemical indica indicators they have their own role either as uh, external chemical indicators or internal chemical indicators and biological indicators and the pcds for monitoring the uh, efficacy of the process. Oh, and this brings us to end of our presentation today. So thank you again. And um, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Thanks for the great presentation, uh, Dr. Nozari. This concludes the educational portion of the webinar and we will now be moving to answer some of the questions that have come through during the presentation. So yeah, let's move to the Q&A session. And I will read the first question. How to evaluate the performance of the VHO2 sterilizers in order to choose the most efficient? Uh, so if I get the question right, is you want to see what type of, the, which model basically, or which manufacturer uh, sterilizer you want to use. If the question is this one, I would say, you know, you look at your instruments that you have and the instrumentation that you are going to sterilize. That's very important for your facility because actually now even in some guidelines, they mention that before you manufacture, you think about ahead, what do you have? Are you able of reprocessing them? So if you are going to uh, purchase a certain type of uh, endoscope or flexible scope, then you think about, okay, how many channels does it have, uh, the lengths and the diameter and like that, is it compatible? Or you compare, right, the most of, so you have most of devices that they can be sterilized with this one. So let's go with this one. So it's, I think it's, it's a decision, really important decision that uh, the department uh, needs to think about considering the old instrumentations. Time is also important factor. Sometimes the cycles might vary a bit, but uh, I would say mainly will be that you look at the instrumentation that you have because you want to be able to reprocess them and you want to process them in a, process them safely. So they need to be validated. So you need to even look at your instruments and structure for use as well. And also the, uh, the uh, sterilizer manufacturer as well. And, and you can consult with different manufacturers and decide which one is the better suited for your needs. Thank you for addressing that, Dr. Nozari. Uh, you read the next question. It is a comment and question together. As was briefly mentioned, VHO2 related waste is essentially non-toxic as opposed to chlorine containing disinfectants, EO and GLUT OPA. This is particularly important as healthcare staff are often working to reduce the environmental footprint of their facilities. The carbon footprint has become important. Are you aware of life cycle assessments conducted to compare VHO2, EO, 
glute, OPA, and quads? Uh, thank you uh, for the guess. It's very valuable points. Uh, this um, carbon um, footprint is very important and different, um, I would say different places around the world, they have different even guidelines, the standards, regulations regarding this about how to address them. So uh, regarding this study that completely compares them, they are, I, I've, I have seen some of the comparison, but I don't have on top of my head just real uh, complete numbers of, you know, how it's comparing all of these modalities together. But the main point is that, yes, it is on the radar. It is very important in some uh, some states in the United States might be more than the others, or some province in Canada might be other, and some Europe countries might be more, uh, you know, strange. Uh, they have more stronger regulation on that to compare. But regarding the non-toxic uh, residues of that, the esterilizer manufacturers, uh, hydrogen peroxide or others, they want to make sure that the, what is a residue is not toxic. So, like I said, like if it's used in plasma system, they have uh, they mentioned that it's completely changed to water and uh, hydrogen, so uh, oxygen and water vapor, and the others that they use aeration, they have uh, other methods, a converter to make sure that doesn't happen and they do not pollute. So. Regarding that, that specific study, I'm not aware, but it's a very important point that you mentioned, and uh, I appreciate that. Very good question, and thank you for the for answering that. Next question. Is it better to have the plasma phase? Oh, okay, it's just, question is just that, or comparison, okay. Um, they get, this is the dependent design. That's what I said. There are different manufacturers, and all you know them. Uh, they are the famous ones in the market, and they've been for some time. So that's how they have engineered and designed. So I couldn't say it's better or not better. The, the end point is that the system that they design, either with plasma, to make sure that the, the emission gas is not toxic, or they want to use a converter. So it's a comparison. I would say it depends on the design, depends on the manufacturer. If the end result is what is coming out of emission is not toxic, then either, either one works for me. Thank you so much, Dr. Nazari. Other question. Why there isn't a type 5 indicator for V202? Sorry, it's not, or could you please repeat the question? Yeah, why there is not? Uh, why there is not, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, um, as you remember from our uh, the slide in third or fourth slide, I talk about history of that. So, these sterilizer have been uh, the first, basically, the one that been, uh, the esterat had its uh, FDA clearance uh, in 1993. So basically, they've been around from 1990. Again, it's not a very short time, but not a very long time if you want to compare to a steam esterilizer. So because of that, because it's new, so the standards, so when this type are, they are in ISO standards. And that basically, it's, uh, the need from the society is makes those that people, they study, investigate, and then try to come up with what are the best conditions that they meet. So I would say one reason can be because uh, I mean, it's not in the standards, and the reason it's not standards yet, they are not defined yet, because uh, now, as I mentioned, this whole part, the first part of the first section of, of our presentation was the recent interest. The situations, all these uh, things of the medical, new medical devices, uh, new flexible endoscopes, the need for sterilization, the need for low temperature, so it's bringing more interest. So I'm sure because now there is interest, so in future, it will be something to be answered and um, uh, it will be developed in ISO. When it is defined in ISO, then the manufacturer can start making based on that. But for now, it is not defined yet in ISO standards. So we don't have a criteria to make one. So that's the point. Thanks so much. But a very good question and I'm sure we'll have in future. Absolutely. What is the progress in the development of flexible scopes to be sterilized either by steam, HO2, single-use scopes seems like such a waste and not good for the environment. Yeah. So that's again another very valid point and comment and question at the same time. So 
you know, there depends on the material, right? If it's if it's a polyethylene, if it's polytetrafluoroethylene or other type of, you know, um, like Teflon medical grade tubings or like that. So some of these, they cannot tolerate steam. So what they, they degrade very easily. So that's why they are not safe. You cannot use a steam sterilization for sterilizing those endoscopes. So with flexible endoscopes, so now there are a couple of things going at the same time. So I think one that are the manufacturers that they are working on uh, getting, making the flexible and the scopes out of material that can tolerate. So it's one aspect of research. The second one is that, okay, what are the methods of safer uh, methods of uh, uh, sterilization these scopes? And then from other aspects comes in like, uh, we, we can see that of course the single use one, but again, single use one, it has its own advantages, right? The advantages of completely you know there's no uh, because it's come in the sterile packages you open and then you discard so there is no chance of uh, infection transmission however it's a uh, material it's you know it's as you mentioned it's a vase of that so that how much it's it's not going to be recycled so what will happen so landfill or how you are going to reprocess or what to do with that i mean not reprocess i mean the recyclability part of it so this is the waste part of that. But sometimes, you know, the advantages or disadvantages and different facilities, they uh, kind of compare and they want to see which one at some point, some of them might be better to use. Ideally, considering the cost, if we can reprocess safely and remove the uh, potential for inf infection transmission, then the best one, I think, I, I would, I'm, I'm in favor of using that. But that's also said they are also available ones as well, or at least now they are designing the scopes with some uh, the scopes because of the, again, the cost, they are making some components of those as single use. So there are many aspects are going and there are different research on different fields going at the same time. But um, the end goal, I think, is to reduce the uh, infection prevention. Uh, there to, uh, the end goal is to actually patient safety and reduce infection. Uh, and I hope we reach there at some point. Thank you so much for your answer. Next question is, from a molecular point of view, why hydrogen peroxide sterilization reduces prion infectivity, but does not totally eliminate them like steam sterilization? So um, <clears throat> I think it, again, it depends on the study. So I, for that question, I may need to even to do further studies about this one, but. These are based on the testings they have been done. Um, and again, I, I would assume just temperature that we mentioned about that. So it is going to oxidize and uh, it is oxidizing agents. So is it able to completely uh, uh, eliminate the prions or not? So that's what these are the testings. And then for esteem, what we have, esteem works with latent heat. And we know that uh, because of the elevated temperature, the latent heat that we have in the steam sterilization is really high. So. I think this one, this question, I, for me, it needs to be more answered, but uh, I need to more study more to answer that. But I think it's based on the testing have been done and just we rely on the testings and the uh, published, uh, published data uh, regarding relaying information on, on the complete efficacy against these. Uh, Thanks so much, Dr. Nozari. Next question. What are some of material compatible with v 2 that not compatible with steam. So a uh, very good question. <clears throat> it has a good compatibility, as it like metals, glass, and other. But uh, mainly, uh, we use the, the materials that we can that can be used in flexible scopes, like I said, polyethylene, like Teflon medical grade tubing, or tetra, a uh, polytetrafluoroethylene, or other compounds that we use in. Um, flexible endoscopes that they can degrade with the steam. So uh, I would say this is the one. And they might be others as well, just these are some of them comes to my mind at the moment. Thank you so much for answering. Type one is a process indicator. How come they are used as internal indicator? Oh, very good question. So um, based on ISO, I mean, when it comes to steam, so type the, we have the process indicators like as tape, but type one is the, uh, you know, type one, they are not internal. However, that's, that's a good point you can, that's in the hydrogen peroxide, they said because it's new and also I would say because of the availability at the time, uh, we didn't have, so what happened was we didn't have really, uh, you know, internal ones. 
as I mentioned, now out of six, we have only two out in the market. So considering those, what manufacturers did is what they tested these type ones as internal, and they, the manufacturers, they came off that they can be used as internal indicators. And again, it was needed in the society, uh, in the community, and then they, they have been used. So here, a very good question. These are the one that they are being tested and validated by the manufacturer to be used as internal indicator, and it's only and very common for hydrogen peroxide acetylization. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a time for more one more question, I think. Um, do you think that UV, UV rays or other sterilizing agents will one day replace VH02? Um, good question. So I haven't thought about that, but do I think... Um, <clears throat> I would say in now we can, uh, again for UV and other rays and other they came out for I mean we and there's okay one uh, for answering that question is a miscomp sometimes we use sterilizing and disinfecting agents at the same time which uh, we should at some point we should differentiate so UV lights and it came out you know whereas uh, I call them disinfection system for uh, and they got lots of application especially during COVID we saw that their applications increasing so but do using as a sterilizer is another point. So I think that, I mean, I don't think it's personal opinion that they will replace, but they will have their own application because of the, again, ease of use, because it's a UV uh, um, system that works with UV might be easier to, you know, to uh, to handle, to locate and like that. So, but will we use them as a sterilizer? I, in my personal opinion, no. It will not replace completely, no. Thank you so much, Dr. Nazari, for this Q&A session. We got a lot of other questions, but unfortunately, we don't have more time. So thank you very much for addressing these questions.